am using Gemini for is I've started testing using it for meeting summaries and it does an okay job. The Google transcription is flawless. Are you able to give an update on Google's AI tools, suggested best ways to use those, please? Sure, I can give a very brief update on Gemini. Gemini is starting to get good. It's starting to get good. I can't say that I'm using it every day yet. I maybe use it a couple of times a week at the moment. GPT is just so far ahead on comprehension and the kind of things that I need it for, like writing a script for a video. It's just got such a, a deeper ability to respond and communicate with natural language. I end up defaulting to GPT most of the time. I know it's my job to eat the Google dog food and I will as much as possible, but there comes a point where I have to get work done and I'm gonna use the best tool. Used Gemini for months and months and months and just found that it just was like Pepsi to Coca-Cola, really. <laughs> I don't know which one of those you like, but you know what I mean, whichever one you like. That's the real deal and there's one that's that's just number two. I'm using Gemini 4 is I've started testing using it for meeting summaries and it does an okay job. The Google transcription is flawless. So if you add Gemini to a meeting, it's gonna use the built-in transcription tools. It's gonna to give you a summary of the meeting. I do like that. Although, to be honest, I've got to admit, I'm also using an app called Fathom. So Fathom is a note-taking app. Fathom.video is the URL. And I've got to say, this does a much more impressive job of note-taking. It's been dialed right in for doing notes. And right now it's better. Now, is it going to be better forever? Probably not. I think Gemini will probably get to the point where it exceeds these secondhand note-taking apps and, and effectively they'll just become, what do they call it? They built a feature, not a product, and we'll just end up using Google. But for now, Fathom is better. So I am liking using Fathom right now. We have tried using Gemini. I know this is kind of a list of things that I'm not using it for at the moment, but regardless, we tried using Gemini for generating images in slides. So CEOs putting together a slide deck, wanted to put an image as a background, and because Google got in so much trouble for all of their weird race charged images that were coming out. They basically switched off the ability to create most meaningful images that you could use for a slide presentation. So, you know, when we say, hey, we're looking for a happy team, it just won't generate images of people. So it, so it flat out refuses. What am I actually using it for? I do use it in email. When there's an email, I can click a button and have like a summary of a long email chain. It's pretty useful for that. If I've got something that's already in a Google document that I want to summarize, it's slightly faster to use Gemini than it is to cut and paste it into GPT, make the changes I want to make, and then put it back in. So if data is already sitting in a document, I am using it for that. If data is in a spreadsheet, for example, there are some tools that Google's automating in spreadsheets that are Gemini based that are useful. They're mainly just those little helpful prompts that uh, that pop up. So I've been using it for that. Apart from that, it hasn't been heaps apart from for testing purposes. From time to time, I've used it for a document in Google Drive where I don't know what the name of the document is, but I know roughly when I opened it and I know who I shared it with. So rather than trying to make that search query work inside the Google Drive search pane, I will just run a search inside of Gemini. This was quite interesting actually. I asked for data from within a, a transcript. So our team had had an all hands meeting recently. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to grab some of the highlights from that meeting. I knew the data was in a document somewhere, but I didn't know exactly where it was in the slide presentation. And this was a two hour meeting. So it was a bit hard for me to like trawl through the transcript and try and find the right stuff that I wanted to find. So I asked Gemini, I said, hey, tell me some of the business highlights from our latest T4 presentation, which is our monthly all hands get together. And it brought these back. It gave us the company growth rate, told us about sales targets, identified some challenges, solved a bunch of problems. I mean, some of this is a bit vague. They solved a bunch of problems. Thanks, Gemini. Wow, great, great insight there. <laughs> but there was at least some real data, um, some real data which, uh, which came through from that, which I thought was pretty impressive. So I'll be candid with you that most of my testing has still been for the purpose of answering that question for our audience and for our customers. Is this actually useful or not? I can't say that I'm going to Gemini every day to use it for things, and especially not like I'm using GPT. GPT, I've got a keyboard shortcut, I've got the app downloaded to my computer, it's fast, 
It's on point. I don't have to ask it a question three times to like get the answer that I need. I can ask it once. And in most cases, I'm getting exactly what I need from it, which is great. The only downside right now of GPT where Gemini does win is for more up-to-date information. GPT seems to have these cutoff dates that move forward and closer and closer to real time, but are in effect stuck in a certain point of time. So if I ask about something that happened in the news a week ago, or if I want to ask who's Ray Gun, <laughs> it's not going to show those things up for me. I've got to use Google and search for news articles, or I've got to go and use Gemini. I saw something on, I think it was Twitter or something like that. Someone in the US, US Senator had made a comment around childless cat ladies. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. Like, I wonder what the issue is around that. Like, I wonder what the issue was around that comment. But Gemini couldn't help with this because they said that they can't help with elections or political figures right now. I'm going to assume this is because Google are very, very worried about election interference and content on the internet being fed into the app that is then going to create potential risks for democracy, which is a fair enough risk. Uh, so Google are treading pretty carefully with this. In many areas, they're treading carefully at the moment. That's Google. You know, the unfortunate thing is for me as the end user, I don't really care about Google treading carefully. I just want my answer. So to me, that's a poor experience in the app or the service that I want to use, but that's what we got. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.